During the inspection of the correctness of the injection system on the vehicle, the service technician should recognize the type and know how that system works, what elements it consists of, and what are its characteristics and specifics. Only in this way can he successfully determine the malfunction based on the symptoms of the malfunction. All elements of the injection system that act on the same area can be grouped into subsystems, air intake, fuel supply, mixture formation, engine compartment, ignition, and exhaust. The air intake has the task of intake manifold from the environment to the engine through the intake line to form the mixture and burn the fuel. The elements of the engine air intake are the air filter, the throttle valve, the throttle bypass, and the EGR valve for returning part of the exhaust gas to the intake manifold. In the previous lesson, the air filter was presented, and in this lesson, you will learn about the throttle position sensor and the engine heating regulator. Air Intake Regulation The throttle valve is used to regulate the engine speed. The driver uses the gas pedal to move the throttle. By rotating the butterfly, the airflow in the intake pipe is regulated. By changing the amount of the mixture, the speed of the engine changes. The ECU injection needs to monitor the position of the throttle valve, which is essential for calculating the amount of fuel injected. When the valve is completely closed, a small amount of air enters the engine and this is an idle state. By opening the throttle valve, the amount of air intake increases and the partial load state begins. When the valve is fully open, the engine sucks in the air smoothly and operates in a full load state. For the correct operation of the injection system, the ECU must monitor the current parameters of the engine. One of the critical pieces of information is to know what the engine's current operating state is. This can be determined by monitoring the throttle position. The element that monitors and measures the position of the throttle is the throttle position sensor. The first injection systems used a sensor as a throttle position switch. This sensor consists of two buttons and a cam mounted on the throttle shaft. When the throttle rotates, the sensor cam rotates with it. When the throttle is in the idle position, the cam is in the home position and one button is pressed. The control unit receives a signal from the first button while the second is open. Most often, minus power is sent to the computer as information that the engine is currently in idling mode. When the driver presses the gas pedal, the throttle opens and the cam separates from the first button. Now both buttons are open. Since the control unit is not receiving minus power from buttons, it recognizes that the motor is in a part load state. When the gas pedal is pressed all the way, the throttle opens completely and the cam activates another button. The control unit receives a signal from the second button while the first one is open and has the information that the engine is currently in a full load state. So, the engine control unit receives data on the current engine operating mode from the throttle switch sensor based on monitoring the throttle position. The two switches send three different combinations of signals that define the throttle position for three engine load states. With the development of the injection system, there was a need for the control unit to form the mixture more precisely.
More efficient operation requires more precise data on the current parameters of the engine. It is not enough to recognize the partial load mode, but how much partial load it is, i.e. precise measurement of the angular position of the throttle. That is why a potentiometer sensor of the throttle position is introduced instead of a sensor with buttons. The potentiometer slider is mounted on the throttle shaft and rotates with it. Power is supplied to the potentiometer from the ECU. The potentiometer slider is the third output of the sensor from which a voltage signal is sent to the ECU that is equivalent to the angular position of the throttle. The sensor potentiometer is a variable voltage divider where the output voltage depends on the slider position. This type of throttle position sensor plays an important role in the electronic control of engine operation. A sensor failure can disrupt the operation of the injection system. The most common failure of the sensor is damage to the resistive track of the potentiometer due to wear and tear during long use. When the slider is in that part, the output signal is lost. The ECU does not receive information about the position of the throttle, recognizes the fault, and stores the error. To avoid a stoppage in the operation of the injection system, a double potentiometer with two sliders working in parallel is placed in the sensor and the sensor sends two identical data to the ECU. When one potentiometer fails, the other still works correctly and sends data to the computer. The ECU recognizes the failure, memorizes the fault, and lights the warning light but the system still works smoothly because it receives the correct data from the second potentiometer. In this way, the ECU informs the driver that the vehicle needs to be serviced due to a fault in the injection system. Until the sensor is replaced, the system functions correctly thanks to the double potentiometer in the throttle position sensor. We have seen that the airflow and thus the engine speed is regulated via the throttle valve. At idle, the throttle is closed, and the engine can only suction in a small amount of air to prepare the mixture and maintain the minimum number of revolutions. However, when we have a cold start and warm-up state, it is an insufficient amount of mixture for the engine to idle. In these operating states, the engine chokes and shuts down due to a weak mixture. It is necessary to increase the airflow until the engine reaches operating temperature. That's why we use the bypass line, where an additional amount of air is let through independently of the throttle valve. A regulator is placed on the bypass line whose task is to regulate the flow of an additional amount of air in the idle state. Through its output stage, the ECU regulates the operation of the regulator. In the first injection systems, the regulator on the bypass line is served only for the initial warm-up phase when the engine is cold. The basic element of this regulator is bimetal, which, depending on the temperature, regulates the position of the valve on the bypass line. A bimetal is a combination of two metals that have different thermal expansion. This causes bimetal to bend with temperature change. At the free end of the bimetal, there is a valve that regulates the airflow through the bypass line. The regulator is positioned to accept heat from the engine. When the engine is cold, the bimetal is flat and the bypass is open. During a cold start, additional air passes through the bypass line independently of the throttle. As the engine heats up, the heat from the engine is transferred to the bimetal, which curves and closes the bypass line via the valve. When the engine is fully warmed up, 
the regulator valve completely closes the bypass line and stops the flow of additional air. Now the engine sucks in the air only through the throttle valve. The regulator has a heater that electrically heats the bimetal limiting the opening time and guarantees that the regulator only works when the engine is cold. With the development of electronic engine control, the regulator with bimetal could not meet the needs of more precise heating regulation. There is a new need to regulate the speed when the engine is warmed up. A new regulator was developed as a specific direct current electric motor with two coils of opposite magnetic orientation. The direction of rotation of the regulator defines the opening or closing of the bypass line. The regulator coils are supplied from the ECU engine with PWM signals. The movement of the regulator valve occurs when one of the windings receives a PWM signal with a higher duty factor. With a regulator with two coils, the problem occurs when the coil that closes the bypass line valve fails and the other coil opens the bypass line completely. When the engine is warmed up, the idle speed is increased. In such a condition, the temperature of the engine increases, which can lead to failure. That's why a regulator with a single coil was developed, which is responsible for opening the valve, while a spring is used to close it. When the winding fails, the spring closes the flap, and the engine only has a problem in the heating mode, which is much more favorable than the opposite malfunction. Idle speed controllers required a lot of space and a lot of components. The more components, the greater the possibility of failure. The construction of a new system that would be less susceptible to breakdowns and without a bypass line was considered. The new solution is the regulation of the engine speed at idle speed without a bypass line. In this type, there is no solid connection between the gas pedal and the throttle valve, but the movement is done via a spring on the throttle shaft. Thus, it is possible to make a minor correction of the butterfly position by twisting the spring and letting in additional air. So, regulation of the amount of intake air at idle speed is performed directly on the throttle by additional turning of the throttle valve. Thus, a compact throttle module was constructed with intake air regulation in an idle mode without moving the gas pedal. The advantages of the new regulator are Better idle regulation Better transitions when accelerating Reduction of exhaust gas emissions Reduction of fuel consumption A smaller number of elements for idling regulation the ECU controls throttle depression in idle mode. All control elements are integrated within one housing on the throttle module. This includes the throttle body with gears, the throttle position sensor, the regulator position sensor, the idle speed sensor, and the failure spring. The driver acts on the throttle valve and engine speed via the gas pedal and cable. When the driver releases the gas pedal, the throttle valve returns to its initial position and activates the idle speed sensor in the regulator. From this and the throttle position sensor, the ECU receives information that the throttle is in the idle position. For the ECU to start regulation, other information is needed such as the current position of the regulator and the temperature of the engine, whether it is cold, in the warm-up phase, or warmed up. Only now can the ECU start regulating the throttle position and setting the engine speed to the optimal, required value. In case of failure, the safety spring pulls the throttle to zero position,
and we have engine operation without regulation. The idle sensor is a button that activates when the throttle is in the idle position. The button is at the minus potential. When the throttle closes the button, minus power is applied to the ECU as information that it is currently in idle mode and is starting to regulate. In the event of a key failure, the ECU takes data from the throttle position sensor and can recognize when it is idling. The ECU memorizes the key failure and can recognize three different failures. Loss off signal, open circuit, short to ground and inappropriate signal from the sensor. The throttle position sensor is a potentiometer connected directly to the throttle shaft. It measures the current angular position of the throttle, converting it into a corresponding voltage signal and sent to the ECU for further processing. The plus supply of the potentiometer is obtained from the control unit and the minus supply from the module housing. Based on the signal from the sensor, the ECU has information about the current position of the throttle. In the case of a malfunction, the ECU estimates the throttle position based on alternate data from the load sensor and engine speed. A sensor failure is stored, and the ECU can recognize three different states. Open circuit, i.e. short to ground. Open circuit, i.e. short to plus power supply and inappropriate signal from the sensor. The regulator position sensor is a potentiometer that monitors the current idle position of the regulator. When the signal from the sensor is lost, the regulation is interrupted and the spring mechanically sets the regulator in position in case of failure. In this position, the engine idle speed increases. The ECU stores a potentiometer failure as a fault code and can recognize three different states. Open circuit, i.e. short to ground. Open circuit, i.e. short to plus power supply and inappropriate signal from the sensor. The throttle position regulator is an electric motor. It further regulates engine idle speed by pushing the throttle through the reduction gear. If a malfunction occurs in the regulator part, the spring mechanically sets the regulator in the zero position. The failure of the regulator is stored, and the ECU can recognize two different states. Short to ground and open circuit, i.e. short to plus power supply. This type of regulator without a bypass line with integrated throttle position monitoring and idle speed control functions in a compact throttle module has proven to be a good solution for electronic air intake control. At the same time, it was a good starting point for the development of an advanced system of complete electronic intake control in all engine operating states electronic power control. Learn more about electronic power control in the next lesson.